One of the most common questions that I get regarding epidurals is, can it paralyze me? So in short, yes, it's possible, but the chances of that is so incredibly, incredibly rare. You have a greater chance of being struck by lightning than an epidural paralyzing you. Um, so according to a study published in British Journal of Anesthesia, um, the estimated risk of permanent harm after an epidural is 1 in 20,000. But that's the estimated risk for an epidural placed for anything. It's used for all different types of surgeries. So the risk for women that are in labor is supposed to be much, much, much lower than that because typically women in labor are, are healthy and they're not receiving the epidural because of illness or injury. They're, they're receiving it to simply um, minimize or eliminate the pain. So again, the chance is like itty bitty bitty. It's it's so small that it really should not be, I mean, I shouldn't tell you what to be concerned about, but for me, the risk is so small, it would not be a concern with, or it would not be part of my decision making and whether or not to get an epidural. Um, I just made a video, I think I've already published it on here, um, about the, the more common risks of an epidural, and those are risks that are important to consider when you're choosing whether or not to get an epidural, but I don't think risk of paralysis is a big enough risk to really be concerned about. Um, but that's just my opinion. I would definitely talk to your care provider about that. Okay, so the rare times that paralysis has occurred, it's because of direct injury to the spinal cord, a spinal hematoma, which is um, blood collecting in the epidural space, or an epidural, uh, epidural abscess, uh, which is an infection um, between the outer covering of the brain and spinal cord. However, all of those circumstances are incredibly rare and they do not always lead to paralysis. Okay, what to do? Um, again, I wouldn't really let this minuscule risk impact whether or not to get an epidural, but if it's a concern, it's a valid one, um, because simply because you feel it. So one thing I would do is be sure to tell the anesthesiologist, definitely tell the anesthesiologist if you have a blood clotting disorder or you've been on blood thinners. Um, this should all be in your chart, but it's important to let them know because those circumstances could make you um, ineligible to get an epidural. Um, I would also ask the anesthesiologist to reassure you, let them know like, hey, this is a fear I have. Can you tell me why I shouldn't be afraid of that? They can tell you about their experience, their amazing track record, um, hopefully the latest research about epidurals and paralysis. Hopefully they have the information to really set your mind at ease, which is important, right? It's important that you trust the person that is placing the epidural. So ask them all the questions that you would like. Um, they should also, the anesthesiologist, give you a, a, an explanation of what to expect in regards to sensation. So really common sensations that women experience when the numbing medication and the epidural is being placed is stinging, burning, pressure, sometimes like a cool sensation, but it's not supposed to be really incredibly intense. Um, from what I've heard, the most intense part is having to hold totally still when you're having a contraction. I've heard that that is actually the worst part. Um, but definitely let the anesthesiologist know if you have any of the following sensations and don't worry about memorizing this because they should also tell you to alert them if you feel these sensations. A sudden loss of sensation in one or both legs, a sharp shooting pain, uncontrollable shaking in your legs, an intense hot flash, or anything else that feels off. Let, let them know, be communicative. Um, yeah, so that's it. You know, again, the, I, I, the gist of this video was to hopefully take away your fear of paralysis from an epidural. Um, I hope that I did that. I hope I did instill more fear. But again, I really recommend talking to your care provider about this. Um, and then if you do choose to get an epidural, asking the, the anesthesiologist about it. If you have any other questions about this or anything else, let me know in the comments below.